This giant brick is a Bluetooth speaker. It also supports 3.5 millimeter micro SD cards, optical audio in, and USB audio. And I'm gonna be taking a look at it for you today. This is the Creative Eye Roar. And I've been using it as my main computer speaker for, I believe, a couple months now, and I'm quite enjoying it. Now, for those of you wondering, I promised a bunch of new videos with the Panasonic GH4 in beautiful 4K with my beard and some pretty cool shirts. And all of that footage is gone, so you're getting this setup. Apologies. But this is the Creative Eye Roar. As I said before, it is a Bluetooth speaker. Now, they do have a subwoofer unit for it as well to pair with it, but I can't imagine anyone actually using that unless you're going for a, a like party, like big room, make a lot of noise situation because this thing already has a ton of bass, which I'll touch on in a minute. But overall, this thing is like a giant brick. It is rectangular. It's a giant rectangular prism. Got grills on all these sides. I believe there is a speaker in this top ring here as well. And then three lining up the front. You get the Creative Eye Roar logo, and then it you get to see some of the features that it has. So it has a beam directional mic, and I'll do a mic test for it in just a little bit so you can hear how it sounds. Not the best mic in the world, but you can use it via Bluetooth to communicate with your phone to answer calls, and you can also uh, use it over the USB as a microphone for your computer. On the top of the device here, we do have the power and Bluetooth pairing buttons. We've got a menu button of sort that just kind of shows the status of the connection. We actually have an LED indicator of sorts which shows the Bluetooth status, as well as the volume level, which you can control by these touch capacitive buttons right here. It has LED indicators for roar mode and beam mic, roar mode being extra bass, I believe. And I do like that all of these light up and the touch capacitive buttons work fairly well. They also control your Windows volume if you're using it by USB. So that's something to keep in mind. The volume of the speaker will be the volume of your computer, which isn't a problem for me. Now on the sides, like I said, we just have grills, a label of Creative or Blaster X Acoustic Magic or Engine, not Magic. And then nothing on the other side, just another grill. And then on the back, we have our assortment of inputs, which I'm actually quite impressed with. Here we have five or 15 volt power DC, which does have a power brick for charging the brick itself. And I just use it to keep it powered when I'm using it over USB, but it does have a battery built in. It is, it's a fairly hefty battery. I mean, it, it can last quite a long time and it actually has a phone charger output to act as a battery bank for your phone. If you have it hooked up that way as well, it does connect your phone via Bluetooth and there is an NFC port on the front here to just tap your phone to it, to pair it up, which is quite nice as SPDIF optical audio in. 3.5 millimeter audio in and then a micro SD card slot to just throw some music on the micro SD card itself And then you have a toggle switch to either loop your music or shuffle it Since usually I do both that's a little weird, but that's okay And then a micro USB 2.0 a to B connection and then over here on the bottom you have the little port jack for the uh, subwoofer base that I mentioned before along with two th super thick but also grippy as you might be able to see here it's got a lot of like cat hair and dust picked up on it it picks up a ton of dust and dirt but keeps it from moving around rubber strips that keep it from sliding around which do work fairly well they just also pick up a lot of crap with them a really cool feature that I like about using this speaker is that you can actually hook it up via Bluetooth to your smartphone or whatever device, as well as the USB audio to your computer, and presumably Bluetooth and 3.5 millimeter as well. I haven't actually tested this, but I have when I have it hooked up via USB to my computer and paired to my phone by a, via Bluetooth, it actually plays audio from both. So like I can be listening to something regularly on my computer, and then if a notification comes in on my phone, it pings it through the speaker as well, which is really cool. Like I. So if you've seen my my video on my big audio mixer setup, you know that I love running all my audio through like one mixed setup. And so this is a very similar setup and I really, really appreciate it. One minor thing is that the voiceover for pairing Bluetooth and Bluetooth activation and stuff actually adjusts with the volume. So if I kick the volume down here to four, uh, I'll turn it up a little bit to 10. Now in pairing mode. Now in pairing mode. That wasn't super loud. That didn't blow your ears out. That didn't blow my ears out. All the Bluetooth speakers I've reviewed thus far, the 
actual like little voiceover voice that tells you like what's going on with the speaker has been ridiculously loud. It's just like now in pairing mode and just like yells at you and stuff. And this actually adjusts with the volume of the speaker. I don't know why that's so hard to get right, but this one gets it right. And I applaud it for that. Overall, though, it, it does sound really good. It sounds really, really great. However, there is a ton, and I mean a ton, of emphasis on the low end in the bass. Like, it makes everything sound like you're listening to a classic rock music station where it's just like, 1077 SFR. You know, where it makes it sound very radio-y and a lot of bass to it, which for certain things, like some of my own voiceovers and things like that, it actually gets a little weird because there's just way too much low end. Um, but for the most part, it sounds really good. It sounds great for music. And like I said, when I'm listening to YouTube videos and stuff, it just makes it sound like I'm listening to it all through the radio, which I appreciate. But when I'm looking for reference audio for certain situations like editing videos and stuff, it does become a little tiring on my ears and a little confusing because that's not how it actually sounds. Um, which is why I can't understand why anyone would want to would want to buy the base attachment to go with it as it, it just that would be too much or the subwoofer attachment to go with it because that it already has a ton of bass and I'll play a couple audio samples here but it just has a ton and I can't imagine adding any more to it now it also gets ridiculously loud when I use it on the computer I keep it between like volume four and eight that is as high as I go eight eight percent. Uh, but it can get ridiculously loud. So I'll play a couple audio samples here of it getting really, really loud and being at a lower volume. Or the computer that we have, whatever whatever case it may be, we never really start with everything to put that romantic idea into fruition. I'll tell you guys my biggest regret when it comes to me starting this whole YouTube journey back in late 2011. Early. Find the cheapest alternative uh, when it comes to getting anything done. Uh, and it's, you know, it was no different when it came to YouTube. And like a freaking moron, when I started doing YouTube, even I decided to use my cell phone to record my gameplay footage like a lot of people did. And instead of upgrading to a capture device, you know what I did? Before what you're getting with the speaker, with the size, that, with the size form factor that you're getting, you know, it's not two different speakers. It's not five speakers. It's not big bookshelf speakers. You're getting a ton of audio, like a ton. And it sounds really good and you have a lot of great connectivity on the back as well which i really really appreciate so it is a very good speaker definitely gets my recommendation i would definitely wait until you actually have the speaker itself and test it out for yourself before considering that subwoofer attachment but on the whole love the speaker so glad i have it it's been like i said it's been my main computer speaker because i've been stuck with monitor speakers ever since i moved into the apartment and I've just kind of dealt with it, but it's it's gotten to the point where the high end on them is very, very like painful. And so I've been running with these or with this uh, since I move or since I got it, which was about a month and month and a half ago. And I've absolutely loved it. So definitely a great speaker. And it's great if you're looking for a Bluetooth speaker that does a lot more. And this is one that definitely does it. Plus, I mean, it's just got a great size to it. It's a little heavy, but it's not like super heavy, but it's definitely a brick. This is a microphone test using the Creative iRoar Bluetooth speaker microphone array. I'm sitting about two to three feet from it, testing out the mic beam technology to kind of pinpoint my voice and amplify it without getting the background noise that you're probably going to use if you're talking into a Bluetooth speaker instead of your cell phone. So my air conditioning is on as well. You might hear a little bit of that. My keyboard, which has Cherry MX Blue switches, is about six inches from the keyboard. So here's a typing test. Talking while typing. And this is a test. So this has been my review of the Creative iRoar Bluetooth speaker. I, I feel weird calling it a Bluetooth speaker because what my definition of Bluetooth speaker is, is so like limited compared to what this actually is that I feel like I'm selling this short by calling it such. But this has been my review. My name has been Adam Repose Vox. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Product link will be in the description below.